For this course today, these are oil and gas workers, so uh, general trades people or laborers, right up to senior management or emergency response people, everybody in between. If they, anybody who works offshore has to go through this training at some point. So it's a class today of 12, and you're going to be joining them, so you're number 13. Uh, but lucky 13? Yeah, lucky number 13. <laughs> Doing this training in a benign, cool environment has its benefits, but if you really want to make the training meaningful and beneficial, then the best thing to do is try and recreate weather like we would experience in the North Atlantic. Uh, this pool, like some of the things that we can do in here is we can generate uh, wind up to about 60 or 70 knots, uh, waves about a meter, meter and a half in wave height. These are full range of sound effects, uh, rain, or thunder, lightning. Sounds to simulate uh, helicopter noises or ships coming in, people calling for help. Whatever you can think of, we can basically do in here. We're going to go from here up to the top where the light bulbs are. Well, today the focus is on sea survival, We're preparing for the emergency, responding to alarms, uh, abandoning the installation, then uh, surviving at sea long enough to be rescued. We've created a number of scenario-based exercises and they'll move to and board a lifeboat, um, a totally enclosed lifeboat. Uh, the lifeboat will lower to the water. We're going to tell them there's people in the water close to their location. Rescue a conscious and unconscious casualty from the water and bring them into the lifeboat. That'll be the end of scenario one. After that, what we'll do is we'll move them back over to the side of the pool deck and we'll put them in the water and we'll just refresh some of the base skills that they already know. I will take them through some survival formations, so how to get together as a group and move away from danger and then how to stop and stay together and rest to wait for rescue. After that, we'll move to the next scenario-based exercise, which is a, a skyscape or an escape shoot exercise. So same thing, we'll, we'll feed some kind of problem to the group, fire offshore, something to that effect. So they'll move to the escape chute, they'll come down this, through the chute, and now that their skills are building through the morning, we'll introduce more weather effects, more conditions to them. Um, what will happen then is when they get to the bottom of the escape chute, they'll get themselves organized, enter the water, swim a short distance to another life raft, they'll hear a helicopter. Once they hear a helicopter, that'll be their cue to pinpoint their location using some kind of simulated flare. And uh, then we'll put a spotlight on them, which will indicate they've been found. And that'll be the end of that scenario. From there, then we'll move to kind of worst case scenario. So worst case scenario would be nothing else is available and I've got to get off right now. So how would you do that? Ideally, you'd climb and get as close to the water as you could, but if need be, you jump. Jump from height, it's only about 12 feet, but that's enough for most people to make it kind of psychologically challenging. That'll be the end of the pool work. And then this afternoon we'll move to the ocean and uh, we'll tie that in with uh, Cougar Search and Rescue guys. And uh, they'll come and practice uh, actually rescuing people from the water. So this is our sea day. The training that we're doing here is just to survive at sea. So if there's anything that goes wrong where they're working, uh, including, I mean, they were to ditch in the helicopter all the way to if there was something to go wrong on the platform, so what they're working on surviving at sea. I'm stuck! <laughs> shows us how, I guess, the rescuers would do the rescue portion of uh, sea survival. It's pretty cool to see that when they come down to the raft. It's pretty cool to have the helicopter over top of it. It's one thing for us to say it in the classroom of how it's going to happen and another thing for them to see it on their sea day. You're training for something that you hope you never have to encounter, but you're prepared for it if you do. It's as close as most people want to get. <laughs> Uh, days like today are important because you get to see other resources that you don't get to normally see. This aircraft here is uh, not readily available to everybody to see because it's always on 24-7, 365 standby. Sort of puts a, maybe a sense of comfort in certain people that they know if, if they had to abandon a rig installation or a vessel, you know, anywhere in the world, because this, this not only isolated the new plant, then they can rest assured that the people coming out and are as well trained as they are in their mind based on their experience. I hope we get to see what it's like for a helicopter to show up and uh, not to panic. It gets loud, it gets really windy. Obviously you can see it as you, you get under that uh, uh, rotor wash um, and there's going to be somebody coming down on the hook, someone's going to talk to you, someone's going to make you feel comfortable saying, hey, we're, gonna, here, we're here to come and uh, grab you. So we do this on a weekly basis with uh, Falk. We have a great team over there that helps us out and we help each other out in that sense. Uh, so we get a lot out of it because our crew in the back and in the front, we get training done. We can keep our efficiency and our skills up.
to be nerve-wracking for some people. You're, you know, dangling from a, a cable, but it's a pretty strong cable, you know. So, <laughs> and then to see that uh, there's nothing to be afraid of, and for them to have a warm feeling that if something happens, we'll be there to uh, recover them. We can't afford to have a bad day. And the more we do this, uh, the better we get, the better our skills get. So you gotta keep those up.